Let's keep reading Dr. Critchlaw's School for Minions. We are up to, what is it? Chapter 6. Be prepared with explosives, the girl explorer's motto. motto. I raced out of the castle, my feet propelled by panic. Sometimes when something bad happens, it immediately puts me on edge because bad things always come in threes. I'm not saying this because I'm superstitious. I'm saying it because it's true. Unless you're cursed, in which bad things will keep happening until you find whoever cursed you and make amends, this usually involves some kind of groveling, a bag of gold and maybe your firstborn child. So far, two solidly bad things have happened. The video and my dorm assignment. I had to think of another one and quick, or my third bad thing would, would be what Miss Merrybench had predicted. I absolutely could not be tardy on my first day as a junior henchman trainee. I had a lot of ground to cover down the main road, past the dorm section of campus, and then around the infirmary to the sports fields. I thought about stubbing my toe just to get the third bad thing over with but I hadn't heard the final bell yet, so I sprinted. My legs were burning as I burst out onto the field. I skidded to a stop next to Coach Foley just as the bell rang. Phew! Every junior henchman trainee was assigned to a professor for one class period. By helping train the minions in that class, we would learn not only how to be an excellent assistant, but also how to lead a group of minions two essential traits in a junior henchman. My mentor was Coach Gunnar Foley, a former lineman in the NFL, the Nefarious Forces League, a ruthless band of mercenary fighters. He was six and a half feet of solid muscle with the disposition of a snapping turtle. As PE teacher, he wore tight polyester coach's shorts and a polo shirt with the Critchlaw logo on the pocket. A whistle dangled from a chain around his neck. The ragged bunch of first, first years stood in a huddle while Colch Foley checked his clipboard. I heard him muttering to himself as I caught my breath. He questions my training methods. I've trained champion maulers. I trained the monster death squad. I've trained more outstanding minions than anyone in Stull. And he questions me because of one little incident with girl explorers. He was talking about the video. Dr. Critchlaw must have blamed him for the disaster. He gave me a once over. Noting the blood stains that still covered my jacket, he nodded approvingly and then blew his whistle to get the first year's attention. Line up over there. I listened as he gave the students his usual spiel, the same one I'd heard when I was a first year. It felt so good to be standing there in front of the other students as a junior henchman trainee. I felt 10 feet tall, which would make me a short giant. <laughs> All right, he said. I don't like to talk. I like to get to work, so I'll be brief. You are here to learn how to be an effective minion. That means maximizing your physical fitness and strength. That means learning to work together as a team. That means training your brain to think quickly when in danger. Dr. Critchlaw's School for Minions has a tradition of training the best, and that's what we expect from you, your best effort. Our first order of business is to place you in the proper level for PE, so let's get started. He held out a clipboard for me without taking his eyes off the prospects. Attack the Cyclops on my whistle. Coach Foley blew his whistle and started his stopwatch. The first years started toward the giant stuffed Cyclops at the end of the field. Lift your knees, Coach yelled. For goodness sake, lift your knees for speed, you pathetically slow worms. I watched the, six the 16 first-year minions make their way down the field. It was true, they were slow, but I didn't think calling them names was going to make them any faster. Pump your arms, you'll move faster if you swing them like this. He waved his arms back and forth. The minions looked at him, mouth agape. Go on, try it, go! They moved forward again. Same as before, but with their arms outstretched. Coach Foley knocked his head with his palm. They're useless, Higgins, useless. Well, Coach, I said, they are zombies.
tactical zombies, Coach Foley corrected me, pointing at the clipboard I held. They're supposed to listen to orders. I scanned the page. Tactical zombies were engineered to obey simple orders given by the instructors and to respond to a whistle. We watched as one of the zombies veered away from the target at the site of Miss Mary Bench. The school secretary had driven up in a golf cart containing two big orange critcher laid coolers. Soon, the other trainees noticed her too and followed the first one, all of them moaning and not one of them lifting his knees for speed. Brains, 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 they moaned. Why are they going after Miss Mary Bench, I asked. She wears too much perfume, Coach said. Like that explained things. He shook his head at the sight. Oh, Higgins, we used to get good minions here. Minions with strength and speed. Trolls and ogres and werewolves like yourself. He looked at me and chuckled. Then he got serious again. I'd have killed for more Sasquatches, but we only had the one. Bigfoot, I nodded. These zombies are worse than the golems. Well... Times change, coach. I guess you've got to make do with what you have. I watched Miss Merribench swing her ruler at the zombies. She seemed to realise that it wasn't much of a weapon, so she calmly turned around, got into the cart and sped away at five miles per hour. The zombies followed, stumbling into one another. Do you think you could show them a thing or two? Coach Foley asked me. I'll try, sir. Class, attention! He blew his whistle. The zombies stopped and turned around to look at him. Watch Higgins here. Higgins will take down the Cyclopes, shark attack style. Sir, that works best with a team. It's hard to have a feeding frenzy by yourself. I just go. Channeling my inner werewolf, I bounded over to the Cyclops and knocked him down. I pulled at its limbs, trying to rip them off. The minions watched for a minute before turning back to Miss Mary Bench, who had just made it to the end of the bleachers in the cart. They lifted their arms and moaned. I returned to Coach Foley. Mindless eating machines? Ha! He said, disgusted. It sounds good on paper, but look at them. I shrugged. They were pretty pathetic. Well, who do I have? Who do I have next? Period. Coach asked, pointing to the clipboard. I dropped to the ground. I flipped through the pages for the schedule. The intermediate mummies, sir. Coach Foley threw his stopwatch and stormed off. The board of directors will hear about this. Chapter seven. One termite can be squashed, but thousands of termites can raise a tool shed or maybe a small cottage. Dr. Critchlaw in a commencement address. I didn't know what to do with the class after Coach left. I felt like I'd been giving a test on the subject I'd never studied. I had to do something, but what? I noticed that one of the zombies hadn't chased after Miss Merribench. He'd stayed on the grass. On closer inspection, he didn't look like a zombie at all. He was tan, his long blonde hair was clean, and there were no flaps of skin dangling from his body. Rather than wearing tattered clothes like the other zombies, he was dressed like me, only in a first-year jacket, purple with black slides. As I neared him, he half smiled at me. Hey, he said. Hi, uh, um, who are you? Pismo, he said. You're not a zombie. Sharp as a knife, aren't you? He said, rolling his eyes. What are you? I asked. He looked human, but then so did I. He shrugged. I could tell this kid had attitude, which was a big no-no in a minion. Looks like you lost your master, he said. What you gonna do now? I was hoping to get the zombies to work together. Miss Merribench had disappeared and the zombies were now stumbling around the track like blindfolded kids trying to pin the tail on a centaur. These mindless mutts, Pismo said, standing up and brushing grass off his cargo pants. Good luck. Zombies are mindless for a reason, I said, remembering what I'd learned from my first year introduction to Minion Species class. It's so they can be controlled by the person who raised them from the dead. They're usually under a spell of enchantment. That, or they were created by an infection or an apocalyptic event. I looked up. Nothing but blue sky and a few birds. Not really apocalypse weather. I can't do anything if they are created by infection, I went on. But if they are sorcerer-controlled zombies, all I need to do is give them a potion for mind control. Pismo looked at me with raised eyebrows. Well, well what? Do you have a potion for mind control? I might. I began emptying my pockets, handing things to Pismo as I went. Let's see. Here's my class list, a rubber ball for fetching, my school-issued DPS. DPS? Dungeon positioning system. It's a labyrinth down there, a pack of explosive gum. Wait, Pismo said, did you say explosive gum? <clears throat> sure. Unwrap, chew, spit, kaboom. I pull the piece of paper out. Boris's locker combination. He always forgets it. My gargoyle action figure. A cool rock I found in the catacombs. A key, a whistle, some change, no potions. Check the other pocket, Pismo suggested. <clears throat> right. A pack of wolf treats. A tooth 
the tooth I lost last week, my Critchlaw pocket tool, a package of first-line flea medicine. I looked at Pismo with my face hot. It's uh, required for all minions with fur. Pismo eyed me up and down with his eyebrows raised, probably because I didn't seem to have any fur. I'm a werewolf, I explained. I tried not to smile because I hated to brag. Ah, he said. I reached back into my pocket and my manticore anti-venom. I finished... I'd grabbed that from my locker after almost getting jabbed earlier. No potion, I said, taking my stuff back. Everything was snugly in place, but I felt a gap. I held out my hand to Pismo. Hand it over, I said. What? He gave me that innocent look that just screams, I'm guilty. The gum, I said. I could get in big trouble if Coach found out I gave explosive gum to a first year. He shrugged and gave it to me. Let's check those Critchelade coolers, I said. We walked over to the sideline bench where Miss Merrybench had left the coolers. There, nestled between them, was a flask labelled Zombie Mind Control Drops. Perfect. I put a couple of drops of a potion in each cup and asked Pismo to swirl in a little critcher laid while I rounded up the zombies. We passed out the potion. I raised my hands for attention. Okay, my name is Higgins, I pointed to myself. Since Coach Foley isn't back, I guess I'm in charge. So um, I'm ordering you to take your potion. I tried to sound commanding. They stood there holding the cups, but they wouldn't drink the potion. Drink, I ordered. I drank my own cup of Critchelade to show them what to do, but they just stared at me mindlessly. I felt like I was teaching a cat to fetch. This stuff smells terrible, Pismo said, sniffing a cup of Critchelade. It was supposed to taste like orange juice, but the protein powder and vitamin, vitamin enhancers added a chalky medicine-y flavour. It was pretty bad. Maybe try water, Pismo pointed to the other cooler. Okay, we gathered up the cups, damped, dumped the contents and refilled them with the potion. I held up the first cup under the spigot, but nothing came out. I shook the cooler and it felt full. I opened the top and saw why nothing came out. It wasn't filled with water, it was filled with brains. That Miss Merrybench, I thought, smiling, she thinks of everything. I should have known, I said. A fresh brain provides the electrical impulses a zombie needs to be controlled by the potion. Pismo looked at me funny, or something. It's science. I scooped some brains into each cup. We swirled in the potion again and passed out the cups, but they still wouldn't eat. It's brains, I said. Higgins, I pointed it to me. Brought you... Zombies, I pointed to them. Brains, I pointed to my head. Zombies eat. Their expressions changed from mouth agape confusion to mouth agape aha, and they gobbled up the brains. What now? Pismo asked. It says to wait 10 minutes to take effect, I said, reading the bottle. I, and then I guess we ha I have to figure out what to do with them. We sat down on the bench. One thing I learned in my minion species class is that you have to know the strengths and weaknesses of each type of minion. So for the zombies... Weaknesses, they're slow, Pismo interrupted, and easy to kill. I wouldn't say easy, I said. Why not? Who doesn't know how to kill a zombie? Bullet between the eyes, decapitation, fire, uh, bam, slice, sizzle, dead zombie. Okay, how about the strengths, I said. They lack initiative, Pismo laughed. What? That's a plus for a minion, as it says above the gymnasium. Yours is not to question why. Yours is to is but to do and die. Plus, I continued, they're really scary looking, and I mean gruesome, and they're not afraid of anything being dead, being already dead. They are somewhat determined, Pismo agreed. The zombies were wiping their fingers along the edges of the cups, getting out of every last bit, getting out every last bit of brain. Come to think of it, I said, what are you doing with the class five minions? Class 5, also known as bodies, no brains, I explained. Unlike class 4 minions, brains, no bodies, you know, ghosts, wraiths, skeletons, bodies, no brains are zombies, mummies, reanimated animals, the mindless types. Definitely not me. I'm all brains, he said. Why would they put me in with these guys? Don't worry. It's just a mistake. They happen, like my dorm assignment. Someone will fix it. I turned my attention to the zombies, who were looking at me so intently that it was like they were challenging me to a staring contest. Higgins brains, one muttered. How am I going to turn them into an, aw into an awesome display of minion power? I had to do something impressive, with or without Coach Foley's help. My future as a junior henchman depended on it. Everyone knew junior henchmen were rated on the performance of their minions. I stood up and raised my hands for attention. Attack the Cyclops, I said, pointing to the Cyclops at the end of the field. The zombies didn't move. Okay, follow me, I said. I led the way, but they didn't follow. I was getting really frustrated, so I practically whined. You have to follow me! And they did. 
They followed me to the Cyclops. Attack, I ordered, pointing at the Cyclops. They stood there. Attack, I said, with more vigorous pointing motions. Nothing. Come on, I said, you have to attack. Uh, they moved forward. They pulled the Cyclo Cyclops apart, tearing and ripping and biting. Pismo laughed and joined them. I felt like crying. I was so proud of them. They were doing it. The bell rang, ending first period, and there was still no sign of Coach Foley. Okay, good work, guys. Um, You're dismissed. I have to go to my second period, history of henchman class. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Pismo. See ya. Bye, zombies, I said. Higgins Brides, they moaned, shuffling after me. No, zombies, stay. I blew my whistle and backed away. Higgins Brains, they moaned a little softer. Sorry, stay, I said again, both hands raised. They stopped chanting, Higgins Brains. I took a deep breath, turned around, turned around and ran for my next class. And then I heard Pismo yell, Bye, Higgins Brains. And the chanting started up again. <laughs>